Hello, this is Riku558, and uh, finally back with another review. And this time I'll be looking at the high grade uh, Gundam H2 from obviously the H uh, Gundam H series. And um, I guess I should do a little bit of backstory. Um, so, the H series, for those of you who don't know, the uh, H system is a uh, system that pretty much evolves with combat data acquired from uh, the Gundam pilot. And uh, after the Age 1, which I've already reviewed, the uh, Age systems uh, evolved the Gundam even further into the Age 2 during the second generation of the series. It's piloted by uh, Asun Asuno, who, uh, who became uh, the super pilot. Spoilers, I guess. But yeah. Um, On to the model kit itself. Let's go with uh, colors first. So it's the Gundam colors with blue, white, red, yellow, and gray. And then the green for the cameras, the A and the eyes. Um, in terms of stickers, if I actually have them on me, I can show you here. I believe this is it. It's just the usual. Cameras, um, let's see, we got cameras, forehead thingies, the chest, the eyes, and the vents, all of which I did not use stickers for. As you can see, it's all painted, giving a nice check textured feel. You can see the forehead camera is painted and everything. I know I'm kind of just showing off, but uh, it took a lot of time. Oh wait, that's not the H2 Normals. H2 Normal also had uh, two gray stickers for the insides of the shoulders, which I did not use either. But I think that was the only real difference. Um, actually, hold on a second. Anyways, um, I don't have it on me because apparently the box decided to not be in my room. But uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say that the extra stickers that weren't shown in this video were the shoulder ones like I mentioned earlier and I think a scope for the hyper dots. Anyways, uh, now that I know the stickers, let's go on to articulation, which I'm going to say is amazing, like all H kits are. So let's refocus. So... Head is on that double poly cap that all high grades pretty much have nowadays. So I can go forward and back. Forward and back a little. Rotates 360. And then wiggles. So you can look all over the place. Can look really high. Can look pretty low. Well, that's actually kind of for transformation too, but whatever. Can look menacing all over. Shoulders are on a poly cap here. And then the pegs into the poly cap so it can go forward and back, up and down, and uh, there's a lot of noise going on in my background. I'm not sure if you guys can hear it or not. Arm can rotate all the way around. Shoulders can move separately from the body. I can actually, they, they can't for this one because um how it's built. But uh, the binder, this blue part where the binders connect to. Can rotate forward and back. The binders themselves can rotate on a peg. And they have a joint here, so they're on a hinge here, so you can go in and out. This little flap is on a little uh, hinge here, so it can go in and out too. Uh, everyone has been mentioning whoever who already reviewed it that uh, this binder here has a extra point of articulation, but uh, you have to break a peg. Which I did, because I actually like it, where you can just pull out. Uh, this, it's not really anything that's supposed to be special. It's supposed to be just like a little peg sitting in there that's literally meant to limit this thing's movement. It does nothing else. It doesn't even peg into anything. So uh, for those of you who are wondering if this is actually breaking the kit, it's not really. It, it's, it's, it's literally a limiter for something that makes it look a little bit cooler. Anyways, back to the review. Arms rotate below the shoulder, band at two joints for close to a full 180.
hands are on the ball joint so they can rotate and wiggle. Right. Shield is not part of the articulation, so I can get rid of it. See, the waist does have uh, one extra point of articulation that doesn't really count because it's for transformation, or you can go like that. But whatever. And uh, the actual waist can rotate all the way around. Um, it's a tight fit, so it can only wiggle a little bit, even though it is on a ball joint. Front skirts are connected, so they can go up. But you can separate them. Um, I just chose not to for this one. Side skirts can go in and out of the body. As far as uh, the arms will let it go, it can go all the way up for transformation. The back skirts are on a single hinge, so they can go up and down and rotate a little. So the legs have the double O style hip joint, so they can go side to side, forward and back, and all that fun stuff. Legs can go, let's see how far can I go? All the way forward, as I, at least until they hit the skirt armor. Pretty far back. Rotates above the thigh. Full, pretty much a full 180 bend for the knees. Although I'm not the biggest fan of how big this gap is here, but you know, I, I, I got over it pretty quickly. Anyways, um, foot is on a poly cap and this big gray piece and the ball, there's a ball joint here so it can rotate at this rotate here a little go forward and back here and go forward and back here so it can get quite a range of movement uh, the ankle armor can go forward and back and the toe folds down and let's see um, I guess the foot can also you know do full splits if the H2 ever needed to do the splits, you can do it. So there you go. Okay, so that's it for the articulation. Let's just uh, reorganize the body of the H2 as we go into accessories. So I took it off already, so let's go over it first. The shield, and I, uh, that's, that's an overstatement in my opinion. Look at this thing, it's tiny. <clears throat> like this looks like a decent sized shield for like a 1 to maybe 220 scale like the uh, mobile suit and action figures that might be an okay looking shield because they're tiny not even I guess but whatever uh, apparently it's strong enough to block beams or beam sabers because he's done it before so that's cool just uh, pegs in here and what you can do is you can get rid of the cuff and yes, you can keep the hand on. Everyone takes the hands off. I don't know why. Um, but you can just do that. But uh, don't use it with the open palm, because obviously it'll bump into it. But with closed fists and the holding hands, um, the shield, or the uh, wrist guards can come off and be pegged back on with the hand still on, if you're too lazy to do it yourself. So yeah, you can go on the back, and go on the side. Anyways, uh, the next accessory is the Hyper Dodge Rifle, which I really like in terms of design. Um, to put it in the hand, let me actually take it out first, you actually have to slide this out, and the handle, you slide into the hand, because it can kind of swivel at a point, pop the hand guard off. Let's see if I can do this on camera. There we go. So yeah, you can swivel in there, so it goes into the hand, and you slide it. Then when you do, uh, the hand gets caught in this blue part, and this gray piece actually grips the uh, wrist guard, along with the bottom gripping the wrist guard. So it's a really tight connection in there, even though it's not like actually pegged in. But yeah, um, in terms of just being an accessory, it's a nice looking beam rifle. Um, it's, it's pretty powerful in the anime. It has a green scope right in there. If I can. There. Right there. So, yeah, there it is. And that's actually almost it, almost it for accessories. I actually didn't forget this time. Uh, the age 2 comes with a set of two white beam sabers. And if I could just pull one of these out. Comes with. 
two of these. Let me try to find another one, even though I should have like hundreds of them by now. Uh, oh, there you are. Found one. There. Let's see, if it comes with two of these, so uh, Asim can be the dual wielder that he was born to be, apparently. So he can hold his beam saber and his hyper dots at the same time. Or two beam sabers. And alright, he does come with a little bit more. He comes with the stand, which has two ports or two pegs for the uh to be attached onto. This is for strider mode and this is for the uh mobile suit mode. The extra part for transformation. And underneath the stand it comes with a closed fist stored uh storage for the extra hands, which is a stored fist and a open palm, both of which are the left hand. So so you know. Blech. Anyways. Okay, so I'm pretty sure I got everything. Um I guess if I'm missing something, put a comment in and uh no saying that you missed something that I didn't miss, because that that's kinda dumb. Anyways, for the final part of the review, before the final thoughts, I mean go over the transformation, because obviously this is a transforming mobile suit. Uh, I guess it's not that obvious if you have no idea what this, uh, the H2 is, but who cares? Anyways, so uh, I'm going to do it by the instructions the first time, and then I'll show you how I like to do it, because it saves time. So you take off the arms, you pull off the legs, including this little waist thingy, and take it off the waist part. And I'm just going to leave it all within camera view, so you can see what it looks like. And then we're going to get this guy here, pop it off, just pegs in. And if you want, you can just peg it in where the other part was for storage. You rotate this base around so that this is facing forward. And if you note, you can notice that it's uh, pointing slightly upward, so it's at an angle. Anyways, so for the legs, you just plug these guys in right here. And then you make the S in the legs like most transforming mobile suits do. Kind of like how the Zeta and the Wing both do it. Also, for an added little detail, inside of the feet are what I would believe to be thrusters. So the feet actually do something. That's pretty nice. And then the legs are done. For the torso, you pull this thing out, like I mentioned in the articulation, and you fold it up. And then there's just going to be holes and pegs on the back skirts. And just pegs in. If I line things up properly. There you go. Just pegs in there. And then, um, due to this being pulled down, this yellow part can sink in a bit. And apparently push off the front, front of his face. And you just tuck in his head as much as you can so if his face is as hidden as well as possible and for the final part of the transformation you flip this forward flip this one forward and I like to pull these things down so they're like fins like that now the body's done arms are simple uh, flap up rotate arms down and then rotate these the binders so they're lined up with the arms. And that's it. Uh, this arm, you need to take out the hyper dots from the arm. And to prep the hyper dots, you pull this gray piece out and make sure the peg is, this one, uh, this raised peg is on the opposite side for where it's going in. And so it slides all the way into the gun, like so. And then now you can raise the handle up and close. Simple. Same process for the other arm that I showed you earlier. Just do this and that. And uh, I'm just going to line up that binder because I do like things lined up. And then let's put the whole thing together. Just uh, peg in the arms accordingly. So it's like that. Peg in the arms once again. And then peg in the waist section. And apparently I'm going to do this off camera. Huh. 
Well, I feel silly. Apparently there's a right way and a wrong way to do this waist section. I haven't done it in a while. Make sure that uh that lowered area, if you can see it. Make sure that lowered area is on top. Because apparently uh it's a certain way this thing goes in. There you go, see? That uh, slides in perfectly. Anyways, um right there. let's just line up all the limbs so that the uh hands will go inside of the things at the knees and then you just plug in the dots into the hole on his chest and there you have it the strider form and if you compare it to something like the uh, wave rider form with the Zeta I would say it's a it's an interesting take because they're both uh, look like kind of flying units. Um, the H2 is a little bit more obvious because you can kind of see the V-fin just kind of chilling out there. But um, I still think it looks very cool. Um, I like the beam right, I like the hyper dots protruding from the chest and the, the fins which I can still extend for a wider wingspan. Like so. So it's very cool. Um, what I like to do for my transformation, I'm not going to do it right now because I don't feel like it. I'll probably show it in the double bullet review, which I do, which I do intend to do soon. Um, I'll show it to you when I compare the to uh, during that review, because I've taken up enough time as it is. So let's plug this guy in and go on to my final thoughts. So, as a kit, I really enjoyed the H2. The the build was fun. Um, I really enjoyed the transformation. Transformation way more than I expected. Um, it is technically a parts former, but I can forgive it because it's a high grade in the 144th scale, meaning uh, the leg gimmick would be pretty difficult to replicate out uh, in that scale. Um, the shoulders, I guess I could complain about that because they probably could have cut that area so the uh, transformation of the arms would be a little bit more fluid. Mm, let's see. The chest is a problem with the hole, but it's it's only relevant on the double bullet because it doesn't have a it doesn't have the hyper dots to plug into the chest. Other than that, it's not really that big of a deal. Um, yeah, I don't really have many complaints about this kit. Uh, I mean, some of these things are just natural because the legs got a bit loose attaching to the hips because I transform I transformed the crap out of them. So um, that's bound to happen just due to sheer friction. And you can just re always replace the polycaps if you want to. So, I give this guy a good old thumbs up. I highly recommend him if you can pick him up. If you don't want him, uh, go ahead and get the the Pirate Gundam, which is pretty much the age 2 only pirate themed. Or go ahead and get the Double Bullet if you happen to like the Double Bullet better. But I still suggest both of them anyway, so... Thanks for watching this relatively long review, and I'll see you guys next time.